All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna start talking about if statements and if else statements. Basically, these just give us an opportunity for our program to kind of go two different directions or uh, later down the road, we can do more than two. For example, like a yes or no question, like if something is true, do this, and if something is you know false, do that. You know, kind of gives us that opportunity to make a branch point. Um, so basically, in this uh, in this video, we're gonna make a really simple program about, depending on how much snow fell last night, your school will either be open or closed. So to get started, let's make some variables. Let's call this first one double. Let's call it um, precipitation. It'll be for how much snow fell last night. Uh, and then we'll also have the status of the school. So we can just simply call that a, it'll be a string. And let's just call it school status. Uh, makes, makes enough sense. And let's default this to open because schools are generally open, but that should be a string. All right, we'll end up with semicolon. So now we have to ask the user how much snow fell last night. So we basically say, see out, um, make this a string, maybe say something like, how many feet of snow fell last night? And we can just have them input it on the same line, so we don't need to end the line, but we do need a semicolon. All right, then we will see in simply just precipitation. Now the reason I made this a double is in case someone wrote like three and a half, uh, or 3.6 feet of snow or something, uh, then there's there's no rounding errors or any truncating going on. So it's just safer sometimes to use a double. Um, all right, see in precipitation. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out if the threshold, you know, amount of snow is too much or too little to keep the school open. So we use an if statement. So we have if, we have our condition here, and then our statements, our condition is in regular brackets and our statements are enclosed in these curly braces. So we're gonna say that if there's more than three feet of snow, school is closed, and if there's less than three feet of snow, whatever, it's open. So simply we can just go in here and our condition again is precipitation. If it is greater than three, um, this is just the regular greater than sign. For example, this would be less than. Um, I'll actually probably make a video on all the different relational operators, but this one's pretty easy to wrap your head around. So, if precipitation is greater than 3, we want to do something. So we go into our statements here, <clears throat> and we would say we want to change school status to closed. So we would just write school status, and we're gonna, instead of having open, we're going to assign closed into there. Alright, so now our if statement is done. Because it only has one statement in here, we actually don't need these curly braces. But for example, if it was two or more, these have to be here. But sometimes I just like to keep them there anyways. It just, um, I don't get as confused when I see it written like that. But that's up to you. Um, so if it's only one statement, you don't technically need these curly braces. All right, so how this works is our program comes down here. Um, we've entered, it has something st stored in school status. We've stored something now in precipitation. And if this condition is true, it will enter into our statements and do whatever's here and then continue on. And now if this is false, for example, if precipitation is actually less than three, or I guess three or less, then it's gonna skip over all the statements and come down to the end of this curly brace and then keep going. So basically, yeah, if it's not true, say we had two feet of snow, then nothing's gonna happen here and school status will remain open. Uh, and if it's over three, school status will get changed. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now the last thing we need to do is just um, tell our user what's going on here. So we're just going to see out one more thing. Uh, let's say something like school is, and then we'll have our status, and then we can just specify that that is today. All right, probably put a period in there, and then we can do our end line. All right, so that should be good with our, that should, uh, that should work out with no problems here. We're just going to run and save this. Uh, yeah, no errors. So when we go, oh, I spoke too soon. What's going on here? Closed. Aha. Um, holy moly. Holy moly. <laughs> we forgot to put this in quotation marks, that's all. So it's actually a string. We're just literally changing the word. Okay. So let's pretend that never happened. And let's try and run our program. So how many feet of snow fell last night? So if we say let's say over four, you know, over three feet of snow. Let's put in a four. So school is closed today. That's because our program said, yeah, if it's over three, true, okay, we're going in here and we're gonna do whatever's in here and that involves changing this variable to closed. 
So if we go and try this again, maybe we say one feet of snow fell last night, one foot of snow fell last night, school is open today. So it came and tested this, is one greater than three? No, that's false. Okay, I'm gonna skip over all the stuff. And now when I get down to here to see out school status, the last time I saw it anywhere, it said it was open, so it is still open. All right, okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll talk about if else statements. It's very similar, but probably a little more practical. See you there.